I want to ask you a couple things about about things that you've you've done on the campaign trail. Joe Biden, as we all know, has worked to overcome a stutter. Uh, and one of the speakers at the Democratic convention was a, a young boy who the vice president inspired named Braden Harrington. Uh, take a listen. It was really amazing to hear that someone like me became vice president. Braden Harrington, a very brave young boy. You made this comment earlier in the campaign about Joe Biden. Let's take a listen to that. Every time he comes on stage or they turn to him, I'm like, Joe, can you get it out? Let's get the words out, Joe. You kind of feel bad for him. How do you think it makes little kids with stutters feel when they see you make a comment like that? Uh, First and foremost, I had no idea that Joe Biden ever suffered from a stutter. I think what we see on stage with Joe Biden, Jake, is very clearly a cognitive decline. Okay. That's what I'm referring to. It makes me uncomfortable. You, ha- you are to no ab- you have, I can't, this is so amazing. It's so amazing to me and, that, and, that and try and figure out an answer. A cognitive decline. Well, when you're trying you, to tell you, me that what I was suggesting was I a think that you were mocking his stutter. Idea, Joe yeah, I think you were mocking his stutter, and I, I think you have absolutely no standing to diagnose no. somebody's cognitive decline. I would think. I'm not that somebody I'm in the Trump family would be more sensitive to people who do, do not have medical not licenses diagnosing politicians ago, from afar. Ago. Plenty of people have diagnosed your father from afar, and I, I'm sure it offends you, your father-in-law from afar, I'm sure it offends you. You don't have any standing to say... I'm not diagnosing him. What I'm saying, Jake, you just talked is about that a cognitive decline. That Joe I, Biden I, I have one last question for you, Laura. You can't times you, on stage, and it's very concerning to a lot of people that this could be the leader of the free world. Okay, that is all I'm saying. I genuinely Thank you, feel Laura sorry Trump. for Joe Biden. At I appreciate it. I'm sure it was from a place of concern. We all we all believe that, Laura Trump. Thank you so much. Coronavirus cases are back. What always shocks me is just how dumb the Trump campaign thinks that people are. Here we have Laura Trump saying with a straight face that she never knew that Joe Biden has a stutter. Everyone knows that Joe Biden has a stutter. Literal children know that Joe Biden has a stutter. And we're supposed to believe that a high level Republican operative and a family member of the candidate running against him for president of the United States never found out? Got it. But as if feigning ignorance about his stutter wasn't bad enough, she then goes on to repeat the Trump talking point that she was simply referencing this notion that Biden's in the midst of cognitive decline, which first of all is rich coming from the campaign of the guy who stared directly into the solar eclipse, who suggested nuking a hurricane, who tried to alter the path of a hurricane using a Sharpie, who referred to Yosemite as Yosemite, who suggested injecting disinfectant and thought an F-35 was invisible and that windmills cause cancer. I can go on all day. So for this guy's campaign to be suggesting that his opponent is in the midst of cognitive decline is a level of projection that I hadn't thought humanly possible. And beyond the blatant hypocrisy of the Trump campaign accusing someone else of being in cognitive decline, the fact is that Joe Biden's been preaching a steady and consistent message for months now. With regard to coronavirus, he's been encouraging the use of masks and stay at home orders and a vaccine focused on science as opposed to the political calendar. That's not someone in cognitive decline, that's what someone in their right mind is preaching. It's the same thing that every world leader who was able to actually get this virus under control was preaching. The fact that the Trump campaign is attacking someone whose leadership would have actually contained this virus as being in cognitive decline tells you everything you need to know about their management skills when it comes to this pandemic. You can even look to their latest performances in this very last debate. This was Donald Trump. Don't All right, while we're doing. denouncing, let me ask you about QAnon. It is this theory that uh, Democrats are a satanic pedophile ring and that you are the savior of that. Now, can you just once and for all state that that is completely not true so and disavow you, QAnon yeah. in its entirety? I know nothing about QAnon. I just told I you. I know very little. You told me, but what you tell me doesn't necessarily make it fact. I hate to say that. I know nothing about it. I do know they are very much against uh, pedophilia. They fight it very hard, but I know nothing they about it. They believe it, it is if a you'd satanic like me to call run by the deep study state. The subject, I'll tell you what I do know about. I know about Antifa and I know about the radical left and I know how violent they are and how vicious they are and I know how they're burning down cities run by Democrats not run Republican by Republicans. Republican Senator Ben Sass said quote QAnon is nuts and real leaders call conspiracy theories conspiracy theories. Why right. not just say it's crazy and not true? He may be
be right. I just don't know about QAnon. You do know. I don't know. No, I don't know. Just this week, you retweeted to your 87 million followers a conspiracy theory that Joe Biden orchestrated to have SEAL Team 6, the Navy SEAL Team 6, killed to cover up the, f the fake death of bin Laden. Now, why would you send a lie like that to your followers? It. You Can retweeted it. That was it. a retweet. That was a, an opinion of somebody, but and that was a retweet. I'll put it out there. People can decide for themselves. You're I don't the take president. a position. You're not like someone's crazy uncle who no, can no, just retweet no, no. whatever. That was a retweet, and I do a lot of retweets. And frankly, because the media is so fake and so corrupt, if I didn't have social media, I don't call it Twitter, I call it social media, I wouldn't be able to get the word out. And the, well, word, the word is, is false. and you know what the word is? The word is very simple. We're building our country stronger and better than it's ever been before. Let's and talk. that's what's happening, and everybody knows it. And this was Joe Biden. We should be thinking about making a mandatory. How could you enforce that? Well, you couldn't. That's the problem. Just like you can't afford, you can't enforce measles. You can't, you can't come to school unless you have a measles shot. You know, you can't. But you can't say everyone has to do this. But you would just like you can't mandate a mask. But you can say you can go to every governor and get them all in a room, all 50 of them as president, and say, ask people to wear the mask. Everybody knows. And if they don't, fine. And they don't. No, not fine. Then I go to every governor. I go to every mayor. I go to every councilman. I go to every local official. Say, mandate the mask. Man, say, this is what you have to do when you're out. Well, as my buddy John Lewis said, it's a sacred opportunity to write to vote. You can make a difference. If young black women and men vote, you can determine the outcome of this election. Not a joke. You can do that. Then the next question is, am I worthy of your vote? Can I earn your vote? And the answer is, there's two things I think that I care, and I've demonstrated I care about my whole career. One is, in addition to dealing with a criminal justice system to make it fair, and make it more decent, we have to be able to put black Americans in a position to be able to gain wealth, generate wealth. You cannot watch those two clips as a functioning human being and tell me that the guy explaining the efficacy of masks and the intricacies of socioeconomics is the one in cognitive decline. Consider too that Laura Trump is in no position to be diagnosing anyone. She has a degree in the pastry arts from the French Culinary Institute in New York, so she should probably leave the diagnoses to the professionals, which is a caveat that extends to this entire administration. But the Trump team's gaslighting aside, the numbers speak for themselves. This administration has overseen the deaths of 220,000 Americans. We have 8% unemployment, 11 million Americans out of work. This is the first president in modern American history to have actually lost jobs while in office. So the Trump campaign can pretend that everyone else is incompetent, but the facts speak for themselves, and they have nothing good to say about this administration. If you like this video, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I take a deep dive into the week's most important stories and interview major players in politics, including Kamala Harris, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Eric Swalwell, Mary Trump, Al Franken, Cory Booker, and many, many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.